we all stand on level ground at God's feet. And that's the attitude with which we go. That's a good thing when you're scared. I mean, but you know, yeah. I've never been scared before. Yeah. But I mean, careful, cautious. Right. Yeah. But I'm not gonna live in fear. Yeah. But I actually called my pastor and asked him if he'd call me and pray with me because I was scared. Yeah, well, that's this a good thing. I lost thing. on the telephone. Yeah. <laughs> you guys ready? Yeah. Sure. Okay. I think one of the things that we we expect to see tonight is probably a lot of a lot of empty sites in some of the places, but there are a few places where we will see some people or a lot of evidence of uh, people living there. Because I think what's happening at this point is uh, we're going out between 7 and 9 p.m. and normally individuals come in around 10, 30, 11 to come in to rest and sleep. No, I thought it was a cat, honest to God. Did anybody see anything moving? Hello? Anybody home? Homeless council, volunteers, are you safe? We have food. The weather we expected, it's still too early to go into a camp. You have to go, you have to go in about uh, 11.30ish, 12. Mm -hmm. That's when they started to go in. Yeah. But see, they still hustling. I think individuals have a personal responsibility as much as they are able to. You know, it's easy to hide from people in need. But when you open the doors of your church and invite them in, miracles happen. And I saw miracle after miracle happen at First Baptist Church. I saw them as they entered into dialogue with these people. This man's a college professor, Jenny. How did he end up homeless? Let me tell you about it. I saw one man who came in and messed his pants, volunteer went in and said, I've got another pair to take to work tomorrow. I'll change into those and give him the pants I have on. I had a good life, went to high school, made it straight A's and graduated three in my class. But I got all messed up on drugs, I got all messed up on the streets, didn't want to listen to nobody, was rebellious <coughs> to everybody who wanted to help me. Most people treat me like, yeah, you're just another mom on the streets. But you got to see the inside of me. Maybe I do look like a thug when I dress. But if they know, if they get to know the real me, I go to church. I'm nice. I don't fight. I try to make friends with you because I'm not here to harm anybody. Because people harm me, and I don't want to do that to other people because it hurts inside. God is always there by your side. Without him, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I would still be out in the streets using drugs, sleeping in abandoned houses. From the, the training, you know, just the things that could happen, you know, just some pretty unpredictable people, so, um, but I am too, so, you never know. When we first started, I was clutching on just my sister's back of her vest. I just do that when I'm scared. It's like an altar. 
Huh? Yeah, somebody set up an altar. What's the board say? Look at him. It's a picture. This is somebody's home, and they it's a sacred place. We have entered, y'all, without permission. Well, my suggestion is to leave um, some bags of food. Uh, How about on the altar? Yeah, yeah. Maybe beside the altar. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't put it on the ground. Oh. I, I, no. I, I just, uh, About what? I don't know yet. Where did he come this from? should be south, huh? I'm going to hit the trail. Okay. We've done two. Oh, yeah. Number one. Number five. Everything's fine, and you know, the submerged ministry here. You know, I, I thank God that you know He allowed me to come here, you know, because it's, it's, it's a wonderful place. You know, it's a lot of love here. You know, I love it around here. You know, I enjoy being around, I enjoy being around the people. You know, I mean, they're, they're just like brothers. You know, so I mean, we get along, no arguing, no fussing, no fighting. You know, what I used to do, I used to provoke my wife to get mad at me or for, to make me go out there and do the things I shouldn't have done, you know what I'm saying? You know, which it wasn't me, myself. It was just the drugs that, that had me, that make me make me done that, you know, because that's what I wanted. I wanted my drugs, then I wanted my wife and kids, you know what I'm saying? The conversation between me and my wife wasn't, you know, she tried, but the drugs had me where what are you talking about? I don't hear nothing you talking about. You know what I'm saying? But now, since I'm off of that, and the friend I have now, the conversation is wonderful. You know, I can concentrate. I can think better. You know, I can comprehend. I can answer her questions. You know, that's the way it should have been when I was married. But the drugs had me where I couldn't think. I, I couldn't do anything. You know, but now I'm fine. You know, I'm happy. You know. My heart is jumping up and down because, you know, I can concentrate. I mean, I can think, you know, I can, I can do anything I want to, you know what I'm saying? I can do anything I want to.